Hi students, in this chapter we are going to see about unit 13, chemical bonding. What do you mean by chemical bonding? Before that, a chemical bonding exists between the atoms. So let us know what is atom and what are the subatomic particles present inside the atoms. So atom is the smallest particle that takes part in a chemical reaction. It is a very tiny and it is a very minute substance that is present in a object. So inside the atom, is there any particles? Yes, we can divide the atom and there are three subatomic particles are present in the atom. What are subatomic particles? Proton, electron and neutron. And proton and neutron are the subatomic particles that is present inside the nucleus of an atom. Whereas electron is a subatomic particle that is present outside the nucleus of an atom. Let us consider a boiled egg in which the yellow yolk is called as a nucleus and white yolk is called as an outer space of a nucleus. Here proton and neutron is present inside the yellow yolk and electron is present on the white yolk. So I hope that you now understand where proton and neutron is present in the nucleus and electron is present in the nucleus. Okay. Here I am showing you one picture. There is three circle is there and one shared uh, circle is there and shared circle is called as nucleus of an atom. Our three circles we can term it as a shell. Yes, H E L L shell. I consist of a blue dots is the first shell consists of a two blue dot, a second shell consists of a eight blue dot, and third shell consists of a one blue dot. Here I am going to explain you what is a valent shell electron. See, the outermost shell, it may be a third shell, it may be a fourth shell, whatever the shell that is in the outermost part, how many electrons are present in that particular cell? That is a last cell. That shell electrons is called as valent shell electrons. Here I am showing you only one blue dot here, so the valent shell electron for the given diagram is one. So keep it in mind. Okay, so let us move on to the chapter, chemical bond, bonding. How chemical bonding takes place? A chemical bond is nothing but combining the atoms together, the firmly force that joins the atoms together. You can you, are, you already see uh, flowers tied in a thread. It is also another example for chemical bonding. The flowers are held together tightly by the thread. Here I am comparing the thread with a bond, a flower as the atoms. So these atoms are firmly attached to the another atom through the bond. There is a thread. Hope you understand. Okay, let us see the definition for chemical bonding. Chemical bonding is a force of attraction between the atoms that binds them together as a unit called molecule. Without chemical bonding, there is no molecule. You know that the molecule is a group of atoms. Molecule consists of two or three atoms with it, more than that. So these atoms are firmly held together by a bond. That is a chemical bond. So in this chapter we are also going to see the types of bond in the forthcoming classes. Yes. So the chemical bond is nothing but a force between the atoms that exists a force of attraction to hold the atoms together. Okay, so let us see how these atoms are combined, why these atoms are combined, why certain atoms combine and why certain atoms does not combine. The answer for all this is given by a scientist Causal and Lewis through their theory called Electronic Theory of Valency. And it's otherwise called as octet rule. So let us move on to the topic now. It's an important sound marks question. Okay. So you all know about inert gases. Well, I think. Otherwise, you took a predictable chart and look at the 18th group that is in the last group that is present in the last. It is called as the inert gases or noble gases. 
Why it is called as inert gases? The gases that is present in the 18 group, that is helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, these gases does not combine with the another atom or the atom of itself. It exists in a single manner. It is called as a monoatomic molecule because a single atom acts as a molecule. It does not combine with any other atom or the atom of itself. So they are called as monoatomic molecule. That's why the name itself reveals inert. Inert means does not react with any other atom. So what is the reason for these inert gases being alone? It exists in a single atom. Why? Other atoms combine with the another atom to form a molecule, but the inert gases does not combine with the another atoms. What is the reason for that? The only reason for that is these gases have a stable valencial electron. Stable valencial electron. What do you mean by stable valencial electron? The outermost shell consists of eight electrons, then it is called as a stable valential electrons. That is having a stable electronic configuration. So what is electronic configuration? Electronic configuration is the number of electrons present in the particular atom. Here they are given a tableau column for inert gases. And helium it is 2. And neon it is 2, 8. What is that? Helium consists of two electrons. That is, the two electron is present in the first shell itself. Whereas, neon, 2, 8. That means the first shell consists of two. And second shell consists of eight electrons. So, all the, see in the picture, all the inert gases contains eight electrons in the last. That is the reason why these inert gases are, does not react with any other atom. So, it is having a stable electronic configuration. There is eight electrons in the outermost shell. That is the reason, only reason that inert gases does not react with the, any other atom. It is fulfilled. It does not have a excess electrons. It does not have a lower electrons. It has a sufficient electrons, fulfilled electrons. If it is eight, now it's okay. It's a fulfilled, not more than that, not too low than that. So all the atoms tend to attain the electronic configuration of uh, inert gases. That's why all other atoms bonded with each other. Okay, so the reason for uh, inert gases atoms does not bond with any other atom is it is has a, a little or no tendency to combine with uh, each other or with uh, other atoms. It does not have a tendency. It does not have a tendency to combine with each other or with uh, other atoms. The tendency power of uh, inert gases is very low because its valence shell electron is fulfilled, that is eight. Stable electronic configuration is the only reason for it. Okay. No more electrons should be added or no more electrons should be removed from it. So that is a reason for a inert gases non-bonding. So no more electrons should be added because it is already fulfilled eight. There is no place for the entry of new electrons or no place for removal of electrons. So it's fulfilled electronic configuration. That's why it's inert. Okay. What about other atoms other than inert gases? Except noble gases, all the other atoms combine with uh, another atom to form a incomplete valence shell to attain the stable electronic configuration. All the other atoms of an element combine with uh, another element to attain the stable electronic configuration of uh, inert gases. These atoms tend to become uh, inert gases by losing or gaining an electron. All the other atoms except an uh, inert gas atom tends to behave like uh, inert gases so that it forms a bond by gaining or losing an electron. Okay. Tendency of an atoms to have eight electrons in a valence shell. That is a tendency of an atom to have eight electrons in a valence shell is known as octet rule. 
tendency of an electron, every atom tends to have eight electrons in its outermost shell. This is a rule of octet. Oct means eight. You would hear about octopus, which is a fish having eight wings in it. Octopus, oct means eight. So octet rule re reveals that the tendency of an atom to have uh, eight electrons in a valence shell. So all the other atoms of an element except noble gases tends to have eight electrons in its outermost shell that it forms that it forms a bond either by gaining or losing a electron. Okay, let us uh, see an example for that. You can see uh, sodium and chlorine. I am taking an example sodium and uh, chlorine. Uh, here sodium Sodium, the atomic number of uh, sodium is 11, which is nothing but uh, electrons. You should know one thing, that atomic number is nothing but the total number of electrons or proton in a particular atom. If you know the atomic number of a particular atom, that is the value of electrons present in that atom, or proton present that, uh, equally, two are equal, proton and electrons are equal in numbers, either by taking a number of proton or number of electron, we can have the atomic number value. So the atomic number of sodium is 11. It indicates there are 11 electrons are present in the sodium atom. So I can write the electron configuration of a sodium atom as 2, 8, 1. See the picture? 2, 8, 1. So the outermost shell consists of only one electron. So this sodium tends to lose an electron in order to attain the electronic configuration of a neon, that is 2, 8. By losing one electron, it becomes 2, 8, because one is removed, loss of one electron. I had indicated electron is lost, so it becomes 2, 8, which is same as that of a neon's electronic configuration. Look at the tableau column of inert gases, neon is have electronic configuration of 2, 8. So it loses an electron to become a inert gases electronic configuration like neon, that is 2, 8. Next to chlorine, chlorine atom. The electronic configuration of chlorine is 2, 8, 7, which it needs one electron to attain the stable electronic configuration because the last electron, uh, sorry, last valence shell consists of uh, seven electrons. It needs one more electron to attain eight. That is two comma eight comma eight, which is same as that of uh, argon, which is inert gases. The electron configuration of argon is two comma eight comma eight. So chlorine also wants to become the property of an argon that it needs one uh, one more electron to attain the electronic configuration of an organ. So it gains an electron. So these two atoms, that is sodium and chlorine, based upon the property what I told now, is the reason for formation of a sodium chloride, which is a common salt that we are using in our day-to-day -day life. Sodium chloride, N-A-C-L, N-A-C-L. A bond is existing between the sodium atom and chlorine atom. How this bond is formed means because of the sharing of electrons. Sodium wants to lose an electron to attain the stable electronic configuration of a neon and chlorine wants to gain an electron to attain the stable electronic configuration of a argon. That is 2, 8, 8. So that a bond is formed between the sodium and the chlorine atom. Thus, the elements tend to have a stable valence shell. Eight electrons, all the elements, if the bond is formed between the two elements means that elements tends to have a stable valence shell. Stable valence shells means eight electrons in it, either by losing or gaining. We now just know we saw. Sodium loses an electron to become a stable valence shell and chlorine gains an electron to attain a stable valence shell. So this is a main reason for a bonding. So next thing is, which atoms lose a electron and which atom gains an electron? So probably atoms having a one, two, three electrons 
in its outermost shell. See, sodium is having a one electron in its outermost shell, isn't it? Yes. Sodium is having one electron in its outermost shell. The same thing, which atom is having a one electron or two electron or three electron? These atoms will probably lose an electron to attain the stable electronic configuration. Because if it loses uh, the electrons, it will become a stable electronic configuration. That's eight. If an atom can suffer two comma eight comma three, this atom wants to lose electron, three electrons. Because if it lasts three electrons, it becomes two comma eight. That is a stable electronic configuration of a neon. In the same way, the atoms which is having a five comma six comma seven, it tends to gain an electron. It tends to gain an electron. If the outermost shell of a atom contains five electrons in it, it needs to gain three more electrons to attain the stable electron configuration. That is five plus three is eight. So the atoms having five comma six comma seven electrons in the outermost shell, the last shell consists of five comma six comma seven means it gains an electron. That is a thing. So thus the uh, bonds are formed between the two atoms, either by losing or gaining an electron. I hope that you understood this topic. Thank you.